Today I'd like to talk about your most important asset, and that's your people. Are you finding now after the pandemic and people working from home, they're not as engaged as they used to be? Are you finding that they're not as productive, that they're not working together as a team? Because it's so important to have your people working as a team. Because your know, team can stand for together, everyone achieves more. And in doing that, no one would argue that a group of people working together can do more than an individual. So if you're finding your team at the moment are not fully engaged, then you need to do something about it. Because if they're not, they'll lack motivation. You've got the fear that they could leave. If they're not engaged in the business and with their other teammates, then it's important to hang on to them. Otherwise, in this current climate, they could be looking for other jobs. And also, they're probably not as productive. Now, to try and overcome that, if you can improve the motivation, then they'll enjoy their work more and achieve more and provide better work in whatever you're doing in your business. They'll also want to stay and build their career with you rather than looking elsewhere for other opportunities. And of course, they'll be more productive, which is really important. So that's critical to make that go through. Now, what I want to talk about today is how you can improve that. Because to really improve that, you need to have strong leadership. Now, what I've found in the past in working with my teams is that to get them engaged, there's a whole lot of processes you can use. And a lot of it is just communication, regular meetings to organise that. I found that when I had the meetings, but also a powerful way too with the SWOT analysis. Now, with the SWOT, the strengths, weaknesses and opportunities and threats of your business, I had the whole team involved. So we had a whole planning day working out what effect that would have. And to make it even more important, we then allocated each thing we came up with in those categories to one of the team members to either maintain it, improve it, or research to try and see what else we could be doing. Now, that made a big difference with the team because they, they were involved. They also understood far more about the business. I also shared budgets and plans and goals for the business and was very open about that. I never found that was a problem in sharing that financial information too, because once again, they understood what's expected of them and how we could grow the business of which they would benefit from by having good growth. And also, the, obviously, is, is to have a great um, chance for more uh, rewards, bonuses and salary increases, of course. So it was something in it for them too, which was really important, but also that sustainability of the business, which meant their jobs were secure. So the other thing I think we need to look at doing and to need to learn is what builds a strong team. And I use the word team purposefully. I, don't, I never talk about staff. It's always about the team we work together because staff I find is almost a demeaning term. And I think that should be avoided. So it's always about the team. And I think in doing that, you've got to have strong leadership and that will build the team because it filters down from the top. You have to be a strong leader, not a manager. You need to motivate, mentor your people so that they, they'll grow. They've got to understand what your goal of the business is too. So you've got a common goal that really works in the business. And if they can understand what you're trying to achieve, then they'll more likely be involved in that and work towards that vision. You also need to set rules of the game so that they know what's acceptable. Even simple things like when to turn up, what time's expected, how long they have for lunch, but also their KPIs, their key performance indicators in what's expected for them in their role. We, always, we all like to know what our boundaries are and what's expected of us and how we're measured. And that way we can know if we're doing a good job and we want that regular feedback both in a formal session, but also just informally. So we know what's happening, which is so important. That will build a stronger team and develop your people much better. You also need an action plan so that you can have a, a thought process and they understand what you're trying to achieve and needs to be documented. But I also love to support risk-taking too. Like I love people pushing their boundaries because that's how you grow. If you keep doing the same old, same old, you won't grow and develop. So I love team members that say, okay, that's what's expected, but how can I improve that? 
What else could we do differently that would be far better and get better results and look after our customers and our clients much better? So in getting that, if we can achieve that, then you'll get more like 100% involvement and inclusion from the team. And that's very important so that everyone feels included, who feels part of the business and that they belong there too. Now, that's what I think at the moment is so important, is your most important asset is your people. So you need to help them develop and grow. Now, if you want to know more about that, I love talking about it, obviously, and learning about it and things that actually work. So if you want to know, get in touch with me, book a call so we can discuss it more and see how you can apply that to your own team. Thanks for listening.